I just blew him away. Whoops. Oh God, where'd he go? Hey guys, this is Jess Moses, and today I want to bring you something a little different. Um, I'm going to show you guys my weekly routine for tank maintenance and some of the other little things that I do on a weekly basis that helps me keep and maintain my tank. So in front of me, I have all the stuff that I do use, uh, and I do this on every Sunday. So I'll go ahead and give you guys an overview of what I have here on the table, and then we'll jump into some of what I do uh, on my every Sunday maintenance tank cleaning. So let's jump into it. All right, guys. So the first thing I do is I feed my tank. So I I want to activate my coral. I want them to be excited about food and all that good stuff. So I go ahead and feed my fish and stuff. But And I, and, and I use this Hikari pellet food. Uh, but today I want to do something different. Um, this is what I use on a regular daily basis. But today I actually want to feed them frozen mices. Uh, to kind of help change up their diet and uh, once a week they can have some mices which is you know like a TV dinner or something to me anyways um, so I give them a nice little treat on Sunday and then I will activate my corals to open up and they're like oh there's food around so then I eventually I'll, uh, I'll feed my my reef tank reef roids so what I do is I usually just mix up a little bit in this shot glass here and I use a pipette to kind of feed it to them. It's not on the table. I kind of messed up on that one, but uh, you'll see it later on when I use it. Uh, and I hand feed my corals and my A cans and stuff. It's been doing really good uh, since I've done that. And then I give it some time. And then I'll, after I know that the filter feed for a while, whatever they need to do to eat, um, I'll go ahead and, and start doing my water change. And this while I'm doing the feeding and stuff, I'll go ahead and make my RODI water so it'll go ahead and uh, be ready when I want to mix the salt. So then I mix the salt, let that, you know, mix up good. And I use this to help mix that. Um, this is my big stir rod for my mixing my salt. And then I use this to pump out the water and stuff like that. But before I get into pulling water out and vacuuming water, I actually use this. Uh, this is a, like a turkey baster. I use this to blow off all my live rock and my sand and uh, we'll get to that later as well so and I use this for my salinity checking my salinity in my tank and in my it's just a typical refractometer in my in my new mix and uh, I use this to be able to test my pH and I use this uh, for my TDS uh, parts per million and all that good stuff to see how good my quality of my water is. So these are the basics. I also use this brush here. Uh, I use this to help with my skimmer. This was this is how I clean my skimmer out really well, uh, and I do that on a weekly basis as well. And like I said, we'll go, we'll go through all the stuff that I do. Um, and I use three different buckets. The three different buckets I use. Uh, this is for when I'm pulling water out. Um, make sure I have measurement on the side here. Uh, I use this bucket. It's just a typical brewing bucket. I used to brew beer a lot. Um, I still want to keep brewing beer, but anyways, that's another story. Um, but this kind of this cool little swivel stick it on it. Uh, it's good for being able to just go ahead and pour it in my my sump without a big mess. Uh, and this is for my RODI water. I don't like to mix all this stuff because then I feel like you know I lose my consistency and, and my quality of my water mixing. So that's what I use. Um, to create salt water for my fish tank. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do, like I said, is uh, use some frozen mices. I'm going to go ahead and put some RODI water in this, and then I'm going to feed it to the tank, and then the remainder will go into my freshwater tanks. That way I can just use one cup for it all, because I don't want to feed them a whole cube. Um, so let me go ahead and do that. And mix it all up and we have our frozen mices to feed so go ahead and feed them we'll keep the same angle because I think it's gonna be fine all 
and then we just feed. And you see the fish and stuff are loving it, so. So that's the first step, and then after I do this, I will go ahead and, and do and feed the refroids. Um, and I'll show you guys me hand feeding that as well. So. so like I said, I'll just take this pipette and I will suck up this refroid mix I have here, much of it as I can, just like so, and take the syringe and go into the tank, and I will hand feed everything. Put this down. So I'll just we'll go right up to the next to the eight cans. You can see them grab. And I can actually get a nice close up of this if you really need to, but look at that. They love it. Yum. Spray all the tentacles, let them know it's there. Clues right up on it, and I actually do feed other things besides just the zoa. I mean, the zoa besides the a cans. I have a lobo over here that I feed. And the worst part about this is I need to turn off my flow because otherwise, it's gonna be blowing it right from this lobo. So I'll come down here now that that flow is off, feed the lobo. I'll feed my torch in the back. I'll feed my anemone. Look at that. The anemone loves it too. See him close up right around it. Feed the hammer down here. Feed my elegance coral. So I pretty much try to feed everything in the tank. Uh, then I get my zoas. I just kind of spray the zoas. Hope they get it. Basically all I do guys for uh, feeding my coral, get some of my frog spawn here, see if I'm missing anything. Am I missing anything? Got that, that, that. Oh, my fabias. I can get my fabias some too. New coral, I always forget that I have on my fabias. These are actually hard to get to. Plus my return is going on. Here, get some of that. Get some of that. I mean, get that stuff. There we go. Flood them. Flood them all up. And then I just spray the rest wherever I think I need it. Just spray it. There we go. That's how I feed. That's how I feed my tank. Oh my god, I forgot my, my torch. It's alright. So that's how I feed. Uh, hand feed my tank and ooh, I'm just spilling stuff. So yeah, moving on to the next thing. All right, guys. So this is where I mix my water. Um, so as you see, the my left bucket is where I mix my salt water. Uh, the middle bucket is my RODI water. As you see, that has a hose running through it. I actually do this in my bathroom. As you see, it's in my tub. And the one on the right is where I keep my salt. Um, I really like this because it keeps it from getting, uh, you know, hardened up and stuff like that. So it's basically just a spin on top. It's got a rubber gasket on it and it does a really good job for me so far. So let me go ahead and get this open. I'm going to go ahead and measure it out. I have a measuring kind of cup thing here. I do two and a half cups uh, because I do five gallons and in instant ocean. Uh, I like to use instant ocean. It requires half, half a cup per gallon. So two and a half is where it's going to be at. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do this. So that's two. All right. So we got about two and a half. So we got about two and a half. Uh, 
cups here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in my mixing bucket. Like so. And I need to grab my stir. All right, so now I got my stir that I showed you guys earlier. I am going to take this water and not drop stuff all over all over the place. Oops. Let's put this somewhere where it can leak right there. Let's close this up so I don't put water inside of my salt mix here. All right, so now we'll take this bucket and we want to fill it up to five gallons. I like to put the salt in uh, the mix before the water. That way this helps mix the salt in. So we still have some time to go here. Uh, I probably got about a gallon more to go. So we'll go ahead and I'll leave this just right here and we'll let that roll. All right, guys. So now that I've let everything kind of absorb all the food and everything's ate, um, now I can go through the process of actually taking my turkey baser subject A, <laughs> and I will actually blow everything off. Um, and this helps keep the detritus down and uh, keeps me from being Lars uh, and uh, helps prevent the old tank syndrome thing. So let me go ahead and start blowing this off. I'll show you guys exactly how I do it. So it's pretty simple. Just take the turkey baster. Uh, and then we still uh, closed up. All right, so you just kind of, and you can see all the detritus that comes off. Look at that. So this is basically all, all we're doing is we're pulling off all this nasty stuff that we don't need in our tank. So let's go ahead and get this all blown off and uh, we'll continue the video. Now that I'm done with the, the rock work, I will go ahead and start blowing the sand off just like this. Exactly what I do. And turning this sand keeps it nice and clean and white. Now, as you're doing this, your tank will become very cloudy. Cores will close up. But that's okay. They can deal with it. Be fine. Bothers nothing. Just if you get some sand on there, just blow them off a little bit. Get the sand off of them. Don't worry about keeping your substrate uh, nice and even. You know that'll that'll all fix itself over time. If you get on all those nooks and crannies. All in here. So, yep, let me go ahead and finish this off and we'll continue our video. Oh God, where'd he go? All right, so that's where I am now and you can see how cloudy it is, but everything is cleaner, everything will clear up. Also made a mistake and I blew off my enemy, so hopefully I can recover him. So <laughs> we'll find that in a 
Let's move on to the next step, guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this vacuum here. And I will start to siphon. So, let's get into doing that. All right, guys, so I pretty much just grab, there's a snail on here. Get off there, snail. Come here. Yeah. Get back in there. All right, so I pretty much just grab my sponges, and I'll, I'll use some of the, the water that I just pulled out, vacuuming it, and I'll, I'll clean out the sponges. I have two sponges here. Just like this. Get them all nice and clean. Now it's not going to be perfectly clean. You'll still see a little coloration differences, but that's okay. No big deal. Look at that. See, look how nasty that looks. All right. Well, that's not too bad looking. Next thing I'll do is I'll pull out my, my basket here. Pull out this fuzzy stuff that I like to call filter floss. Um, but it's pretty much just like teddy bear stuffing that I buy from Walmart. I'll just take some more of it. It's probably a little too much. So I'll just, as much as I want in there, and I'll spread it out inside of it. Just like that. You saw on the bottom of this, it actually has sponges just like the ones I was first cleaning. And then I'll just stuff this right back in there. This helps clean up that real nice fine stuff. Get on in there. There we go. We got her in there. And just clean up the rest of this and then put it back together. That's all I really do down here on the sump. Nothing big. That one goes here. And put the next one in here. But yeah, you can see how bad it. This is only a week's worth of uh, filtering, so you can see how much work it does. So, cheap, and it's cool, works, love it. Next, and then I start up my refill of the water. So, I'll just basically take this hose here, and apparently, it's dropped down here, and I'll feed it into my sump. Just like this. Actually, let's go through here. Ugh. Stop struggling, me. Okay, go. And I'll make sure that starts up just right. There we go. This is how I, uh, I refill my tank. Um, so this is my skimmer here, and uh, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and just empty that out. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and go through a thorough screen, uh, cleaning this time. I recently did it not long ago. So, Alexa, turn off the skimmer. So all I do is it turn it off, and I, I just dump it out. So. so guys, I was extremely worried that I had lost my anemone, as you heard the gasp from earlier, but... A few hours later, he turns up 
right here. So he is doing just fine. It looks like he's in this little crevice here. So hopefully he moves around and gets back on track to where he likes to be. So just just, just to tell you that uh, when you're cleaning out your tank and you're using your turkey baser, just don't blow on things too hard, especially if you have smaller enemies and stuff like that. Um, but you do want to blow off that detritus. So Again, guys, thank you for tuning in, checking out my channel. Hopefully this was educational in some kind of way. Uh, but this is what I do on a weekly basis to maintain my tank. And uh, if there's something that you guys can give me as a tip to maintain my tank, I would greatly appreciate it. So, all right, guys. Peace. So, guys, thank you for checking out my channel. As always, I am Jess Moses. Feel free to click on the little circle. That has my stupid face on it. Uh, subscribe to me if you enjoyed the video. And if you want to see some of my previous videos, I will give one description of the previous video before this one. And if you see a second video, it's because there's another video after this video. So thank you for checking me out. As always, free fun.